don't want to waste any time. For example, the first thing that fascinated me is you had, I'm going way, way back to the beginning, you had a great job, Hewlett Packard. You had a legitimate, you know, job. Oh, I was working on the hottest product of the day, the equivalent of today's hottest iPhone and everything. Right. It was the handheld calculator from Hewlett Packard. Yeah. Right. And I you had this great job, and then you said, I'm leaving, I'm going out with my buddy Steve Jobs, Ronald Wayne, and we're gonna make our own company called Apple. That took guts. A little problematic saying it that way because we had two starts to Apple, not just one start. We had to start as a little partnership with one product, just kind of in the garage, just homey stuff, and then we started a real company. And the real company was when I left Hewlett Packard. I see, And okay. it was a tough, tough decision for me because I wanted to be an engineer for life. I believe in engineers. Everything they do has to work, and that's a type of honesty, and I believe in it, and it's learned stuff. Right. And so, so I was going to be an engineer for life, Hewlett Packard, never go up the, the management chart. Um, and uh, I had to convince myself, starting a company, that's like, I'm not a company running person, I'm an engineer. And I finally convinced myself I could start Apple and be an engineer still. Right. Laboratory, just go in the laboratory and build my stuff. Well, time will tell if you made the right decision. Now, <laughs> <laughs> we have, you know, we found here this picture of you and Steve Jobs with the original Apple One, and it just takes you back. It's such an amazing photo. That was the first one, and, uh, and, and we found out the first Apple One ad we found. Check it out. This is the ad for it, and the price. Look at the price. $666.66. Why? That was me. I was, was, I, was in, I was into repeating digits, and it came from, I had run the first Dial-A-Joke in the San Francisco Bay Area, the highest called single line number in the United States. I was just a young engineer, barely out of college. We had a monopoly phone company, only one answer machine you could lease, high price, could barely afford it, but it was, and any, but it got 2,000 calls a day, and anybody who had a similar number got 100 calls a day. So I changed the number, and then I tried to make an easy one, 2555555, and the phone company said, we're not assigning on the 5,000 bank. So I got 2556666, my first good phone number, and then I got a number with six digits the same in Cupertino, 9969999 for my dial a joke. And sure. I was into these good numbers, um, and you could never get seven digits the same in those days in San Jose yeah. because they wouldn't share any of the numbers San Francisco had, and San Francisco had 7777777 and all those. So I got the good numbers. I was into good numbers, and I got uh, 2211111 once on a cell phone, and that was very similar to Pan Am, 800 2211111. I got all these calls, and people would hang up, and I discovered I was booking a flight for myself, and in my flight guide, I saw Pan Am's number. So the next time I got a call, I said, are you calling Pan Am? And she says, yes. And I said, oh, we were on our lunch break. What can I do for you? <laughs> I booked, booked my first flight. Oh, for, great. for two years, I answered every single call on my phone. Pan Am, international desk, Greg speaking. And my friends would shout, it's me, Steve. And uh, I, I, play, I booked the phoniest flights and times that you I could. And I would tell people, you can take the Grasshopper Special, where you go to through five different cities up and down to get out to, to Boston. Or I would tell them the Gambler Special. You fly to Las Vegas, you roll the dice. If you get a seven, the next leg is free. I had so much fun. But after, by the way. You're after, ruining people's lives. But how did, how did I not get caught? Yeah. It would, it'd be easy for somebody to realize who they'd called by mistake sure. and, that, and set the police on you. So after two weeks, I got that scared, and I said, so for the next two years, I would book the phoniest flights I could and then say, I'm just pranking you. Oh, okay. I'm not really Pan Am. Do you have, uh, and then they love that. But, uh, but, but so, so, so we had the Apple, the Apple One computer, and we were going to oh, get paid $500 per board wholesale by the store that was local. And, oh, add 30% to that. Add a third to it, and that comes out 667 Ah, oh, no, 666, now, I like you get repeating digits. Now, then that it's, uh, it's a sign of the devil? The I don't know devil? if they were complaints, but we did hear from somebody, and Steve and I didn't know 666 was any sign. Yeah, sure no, we didn't, didn't even know yeah. it. No, uh, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> there are, uh, you know, it's so interesting. There's been uh, two Steve Jobs movies. Uh, the one by Aaron Sorkin showed that you guys obviously cared a lot about each other, but you had a combative relationship. Was that fair? Did you think that was a fair depiction? The combative relationship was totally subtle. I never once confronted Steve Jobs in life. I would never say anything negative to him. You should do this. I would not even do right. that to a friend because I'm real soft, very, very soft. But those issues were going on in the company that were put in my voice. And one time I did make this, a statement similar to one of them right. to our president. President John Scully, like blaming him for having had a shareholders meeting, hardly mentioning the Apple II, and all the Apple II people wanted to quit. Right. So you did have. So I stood things. up once.